live in West Lafayette, Indiana. We're in Holloway Gymnasium for week two of Big Ten Women's Volleyball here on the Big Ten Network. It's the Purdue Boilermakers hosting the undefeated Nebraska Cornhuskers. We welcome you into our broadcast booth. My name is Brendan Gorm alongside my partner, my co-host, Alex Kirkhoff. And Alex, a wonderful matchup on our hands today. The Boilermakers, they got a tough task, undefeated Nebraska. And Nebraska is undefeated because of the play of Mary Beeson and Harper Murray. Definitely. I mean, they're looking at a very strong offensive side here. You've got Merritt Beeson with, so far this season, 113 kills, but followed very closely by Harper Murray with 108 kills. And although they do have a strong offense, it'll be interesting to see their matchup with Purdue, because Purdue has got a pretty strong defense as well. Absolutely, because in the middle, anchoring the defense, standing strong and tall, the Boilermaker middle blocker, Raven Colvin. Yeah, Raven Colvin adds a very great dynamic to this group. Not only just being announced Defensive Player of the Week, but so far this season, she's got an average of 2.29 blocks per set with a season high last week against Maryland of 10 blocks. It's pretty incredible thinking about how one person can contribute that much to a game. But with that, I mean, even though we're looking at the defensive side of Purdue, you've also got to look at the defensive side of Nebraska. Absolutely, because Nebraska is actually coming into this game with the best opponent hitting percentage in the NCAA. They, their opponents average only 106 hitting percentage. Extremely low and extremely good defense by the Cornhuskers. Definitely, and all in all, and, and looking at everything all together, you can look at statistics, but you got to think Purdue's got their home advantage. They're here around all these people cheering them on, and I think it's a great atmosphere to be a part of, and it definitely gets the team riled up. Oh yeah, Holloway Gymnasium is one of the most underrated gymnasiums in all of college volleyball. The crowd gets it loud, and they have fun. stepping back. Boy, has she been such a great freshman this year. Absolutely. I mean, starting off last season and training, even in her senior year, I mean, she's definitely been prepared for this, and it's it's definitely paid off this season so far. She'll use that pat the jump serve. It'll be tapped over by Merritt Beeson in the middle. Eva Hudson sends it back. She'll get the first point of the game. I mean, this just goes to show right from the start, they're ready and they're prepared. And, and with that, with such a hard first on, I mean, kill, she's ready to go. Eva Hudson, the sophomore on the Boilermakers, led the team in kills in their last two matches. 30 kills versus Maryland and 15 versus Rutgers. What a beautiful serve by Chacoin, but it's dug out. Save, Nebraska keeps it alive and it's popped over Hornung. We'll bump it up. She'll bump it up again. Anderson over to Hudson. That's kill number two. Just kidding. It'll go Nebraska's way. And so Hudson, just a little bit too strong, misses the court. And I think this goes to show what we were talking about earlier, that there are offense and defense strong on Nebraska's side. They're ready for the offense right here, but they're also ready to serve those kills. Absolutely. I mean, Nebraska is such a well-rounded team. As Oh, what a beautiful little touch. Harper Murray on the left side, just a little loft over the outstretched arms. Oh, I think it was Lourdes Myers and Anderson. I mean, it just goes to show that even something so simple can get you the point. It doesn't have to be a hard swing, does not it? A, no, not all the time. Just a nice little soft touch. Hudson bumps it up. Anderson back to Hudson. Off the net, and it will land. Hudson, two Whoa. kills. That was a close call. I mean, it was right there on the line, but it just goes to show that when your attention is focused towards one part of the court, the ball can always go to the next. You can kind of use that eye manipulation, right? You, you look off, you yeah. look like you're about to hit it to the left, but you hit it to the right. Maddie Skimmerhorn to serve us away. Tapped over once again by Beeson. Eva again, my goodness, that's three straight. She is having an on fire game so far. You can see in the team's energy, she's ready. She's ready to go. I mean, when is she not ready? She stepped on the Boilermakers roster and was an instant starter and became not only one of the best players in the Big Ten, but one of the best players in the nation last year, just as a freshman. And an error 
on Nebraska gives the Boilermakers another point. the center, back to serve for the Boilermakers. She gets it over, slam down hard. That's Becca Allen, my goodness. I mean, you got that aggression, you got that, that vigor trying to go in here, and you know, sometimes better man wins with that. She's got a lot of pop on that. She does. She jumped up pretty high for that too. She was ready, she was, she was waiting. So up on the left side. It's saved. In the middle, Anderson can't dig it out. Nebraska will tie it at five. Nebraska's definitely got a lot of ambition going in here with their with their offensive side, as we talked about. But you can see it so much so when they go for the kill. At the net, not rejected. Another point goes Nebraska's way. Back to serve, the libero Lexi Rodriguez, the junior from Sterling, Illinois, gets it over to Skimmerhorn, tapped up for Eva Hudson, and Hudson's gonna get another kill. Is that four kills for Eva Hudson? I believe so, I believe. She's gotten this is, her, this is her fourth kill so far tonight. That's every offensive point for the Boilermakers. I know, exactly. Anderson over on the right side. It is denied. Great block by Allie Bat Battenhorst. service error from Nebraska. You don't typically expect to see two service errors in a set, especially so early from a team that's just so good as Nebraska. I think sometimes it shows even if you can have a flawless work together with your team defensive and offense wise, when it goes to the single, single player, sometimes you just can't get it over the net. And it's one of those things that happens, but we'll see how they recover. Definitely. That's, that's a good double block by the Boilermakers. Raven Colvin the dig. Ball is still in play despite it hitting the ups, the, the, the ceiling. Nebraska keeps it alive though. Again, another double block. My goodness, what a rally on the right side. Again! That was that like three or four double blocks? That was incredible defense. Definitely. Beeson on the right side was completely stonewalled. You know, we saw Nebraska go for that touch earlier. You think they should have done that there instead of the hard swing? It's hard to say with that when it's such a back and forth competitive atmosphere with this going on. Sometimes you don't know exactly what call to make. Tied up at eight. The crowd cheer does not catch that off guard. Coin can't get it to fall. Set up back. 
Harper Murray won't go. Harper Murray again. She'll get it to go over. But it is too strong. So Harper Murray will record a point. Nebraska is still the serve. Hudson gets the dig. Anderson over oh, fire. She was set. She was ready for that kill. She, she had been waiting for that, I think, this entire game. And that was a really nice look for Anderson because you typically see her set it over to the side and set a little bit a shorter set to the middle blocker. And Lourdes Meyer's able to hammer it home. A little floaty serve from Ellie Hornung. Sliding attack won't work for Andy Jackson. Holy to coin though, she'll make sure she gets the kill. This is her first kill, I believe, tonight. So she's just getting started, she's just getting warmed up. And being her first, I definitely don't think it'll be her last. Oh, no. oh, beautiful dig. Back over to the Boilermakers. Set up Eva Hudson out of the back row. Not strong enough. And we're tied up again. We're at 10. Kennedy Orr coming in for the Corn Oscars. She'll go back to serve. And away we are. Anderson over to Myers. It's denied by Becca Alec on the left side. Boy to boy. It'll deflect off Nebraska for the point and. Man, does she just have such a powerful swing. She does, and she's got such a wide gate when she comes up for that kill. Every single time she's ready, and she's, she's always ready to make that next action move. I have never seen someone hit a ball as violently as Chloe Chicoy. That jump serve too, it's just unbelievable how talented she is. With another double block. Skammerhorn will set it up for Hudson on the left side. Set up, Myers a soft touch, she'll fall down, ball still alive, out of the back row! Oh. That's Merritt Beeson. They tried to dig for that, but they just couldn't get it too far up and up. Across the court to Hudson, who barely taps it over. Here comes Beeson again. It's deflected. Skimmerhorn saves it. Lourdes Myers gets it over, and ball is still live. On the other side, Harper Murray can't get it. Chicoin out of the back row! She goes for her. This is her third kill for the night. And I don't, again, she's got that power. She's got that strength. And I think now she's just got to carry it all the way through. It's Especially when her team needs it. I mean, they were tied up and she sent it right over. I mean, I'm scared of, of that swing. I wonder what the opponents think of that. I know, I wouldn't want to be that ball, that's for sure. Oh no, a little whip. Lexi Rodriguez in as the middle blocker. She's not able to tap it over. Excuse me, not Lexi Rodriguez. It was uh, Becca Alec. Couldn't get it over. Kind of just whiffed on the tap. And so the Boilermakers now a two point lead. On the far side. Little bit too hard. Out of bounds by Harper Murray. Purdue team's definitely got a really strong communication line going on here. They're working together, they're discussing where the ball needs to go. And it's definitely something that you see on both sides of the team. That communication is extremely important, right? Making sure your players are in the right spots. Of course. That's a beautiful play, though. Nebraska gets a point right back. Merritt Beeson with the kill. Beeson's third kill. And that was a nice little play that Nebraska drew up, right? You had uh, 
the fake swing and then Beeson follows up right behind. It's that little misdirection. Of course, and they hit the ball right where it needed to go. There was no Purdue goal in sight. Well, back to Lawrence, Ava Hudson, she'll get the kill. And Nebraska looks like they're gonna call timeout. Boilermakers up early, 15 to 12. We'll be right back on the Big Ten Network. It's been quite the start here at Holloway Gymnasium. The Boilermakers leading the Nebraska Cornhuskers 15 to 12. And that quick start for the Boilermakers in large part thanks to Eva Hudson. Yeah, so far in just these, in just these past 10 minutes, I mean, she's had a great five kills so far already. With there being, that is one third of the Purdue score, which is pretty amazing. And it, it just goes to show that she's out and she's ready for some action. We talked about it earlier. Hudson came into this game after leading the team in kills in their last two matches. And she's on pace to do it again. And hey, good things happen when Eve Hudson leads her team in kills. Exactly. She started out so strong at the beginning of the game. I don't see this, I don't see this letting up anytime soon. Taylor Anderson back to serve. She'll get it over the net. It'll be bumped up high. And it'll be a free play for Purdue. Skimmerhorn, a little awkward bounce, and now a free play for Nebraska. Bumped up, sit over behind, and slammed down. Beautiful attack by Merrick Beeson. Yeah, I mean, looking at her score, this is her fourth kill so far. Fourth kill in this game so far. And that was a beautiful set, too, by the yeah. center, Bergen Riley. She put that in the perfect position for Beeson to swing. Oh, definitely. Skimmerhorn saves it. Hudson on the right side. There she goes. There she goes, and that is her sixth kill for the night. It just goes to show she's not letting up. She's only getting stronger. And you notice how excited this crowd gets for Eva Hudson. She's one of the most energetic players on this roster. You see, after she scores, she gets excited, and this crowd gets excited oh, with her. Of course, and not only her, but her teammates are always there back for the support her, which I'm sure they love the kills, too. Absolutely. But I bet Nebraska doesn't, so they retaliate. They get a kill of their own, and Nebraska will... Well, it's uh... only fair, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Beeson will serve. Skimmerhorn again will get the dig. Set up Chloe Chacoin, a soft oh, touch. Wow. You're so used to that hard swing of Chacoin, that exactly. little bump up, get it over the hands. That's a great job, isn't it? And with her past, and with her past three kills, I mean, you wouldn't suspect something just like a little light tap, but she knew exactly what they needed. Colvin touches, oh, off the net, but it's saved. Oh, wow. Nebraska saves it. Anderson back over to Woolard. And Kenna Woolard will record her first kill. The freshman outside hitter. She's been having a great season this year. Absolutely. I mean, I know that I, that was just her first kill so far for the game, but, I mean, you see her gearing up ready to go. Yeah, she had a career-setting day, actually, against Rutgers. Six kills with only one error and an efficient 385 attack percentage. And Purdue will get another point. Wow. Lourdes Myers will get the credit. Boilermakers starting to pull away now. Five ahead of Nebraska and six away from 25 to take the first set. Yeah. Nebraska's team is definitely spinning a little more. Nebraska's head coach, he's not liking what he's seeing. He's going to call a quick timeout. John Cook wants to talk things over. His team down five here in the first set. Boilermakers up by five here in Holloway Gymnasium. Kind of running away from Nebraska after a very intense first set. You know, but you also have to look at the fact that sometimes Nebraska, they start out they start out a little rocky, but they always have the chance to come back here strong. I mean, their team's ready. They're keeping the line of communication very open, and that plays a key factor in the rest of the game. 
Exactly. I mean, you all you got to do is look at their record. They're undefeated and ranked number two in the AP poll. Exactly. And look at that. Beautiful kill. Abby Jackson. Andy Jackson with a little flying attack. Skimmerhorn or Hudson can't get the dig, and there you go. That's exactly what you need from Nebraska. On the left side, or on the right side, Wollard, and then it'll deflect out of bounds for the kill. And that's her second kill for tonight, and you know, I think that sometimes it's just what a decent player needs is someone that can get in there from that corner and do that kill that the team needs. And especially for Wollard, right? She's coming off the bench, so that, that off the bench impact and energy she brings, those skills are very big. Oh, definitely. No, but that is a monster kill. That one had some force on it. Andy Jackson again. That is too straight for Andy Jackson, and she'll go back to the bench. Andy Jackson leads her team in hitting percentage. 504, extremely efficient player. Or will serve it over. Hudson, a little no look hit. It gets dug out, out of the back row. Too hard. Out of bounds. Baron beats in the back row attack. Right, and even though that ball was out of bounds, Nebraska's ready. They're ready to send the, send the balls over to Purdue, and they're, they're not going to go down without a fight, and that's for sure. Yeah, we kind of have that tough angle where we can't see the, the final edge of the court, but Shacoin will serve us away. Blocked by Myers. But then it's like it got rejected by Myers, and then Becca Alec deflected it back over, and then Hudson wasn't able to save itself. She was trying. It was a, it was a little bit of a sloppy ball, and sometimes it's hard to retaliate from those. 21-17. Hudson will set it up. Anderson on the right side. Chicoy. You bet. That's five kills for Chloe Chicoy. I mean, she is on top of it. She doesn't lose her focus. She doesn't lose her goal. She is ready for every single set. Three points from set uh, from winning set one. Put up by Harper. Back to Harper. A light touch. It gets over the arms of Hudson oh, no! and Skimmerhorn. Just a bit too late to get there. And so in comes Lindsey Krause, the junior from Papillion, Nebraska. The serve by Murray gets over. Out of the back row to Coin gets double blocks. Gonna reset, set up by Riley. And Nebraska is going to get the point. It's only three-point lead now for the Boilermakers, and Nebraska has the ball. And you see both teams trying to keep their calm about this, but also trying to communicate with each other. When that ball needs to go up, there needs to be a block there. Murray, another service error for the Cornhuskers. That is three in this first set. It's sometimes hard with those, because especially when the score is getting so close, you need every single point you can get. Taylor Anderson. The crowd, the student section thought it hit the line, but referee saying no, but look at this. Oh. Dave Shondell, he he brings out the green card. I think, yeah, the student section wasn't having that. They are 200 eyes looking right at the ball, and they don't miss a thing. Well, that's one thing about Dave Shondell. He has such a strong relationship with this crowd and the student section. He's one of the most active coaches that I've ever seen in connecting with the fans of his team. He puts a lot of trust in that student section. I mean, they're standing, what, like, 20 feet away from the line, he trusts them to make the right call. 
I think it just goes to show that, you know, you can have your team, you can have your reps, but man, that student section will always be there for you. Yeah, I mean, you, you compare it to something like football, where you get fans that will just boo at every call. Oh, absolutely. But here in volleyball, the fans really do have the best intention. But even despite the trust that Coach Shondell has in the student section of Purdue, it is still ruled Nebraska ball, so it's 23-20. And we'll see who's back to serve. It's gonna be Rodriguez, down three. Comes to Hudson, Anderson, Colvin, just off the wrong side of her hand, it's wide left. Oh, but they're gonna say it went off the hands. I think it went off the hands of Merritt Beeson. And now Nebraska, they're gonna call the challenge. And it's interesting, so late in this set that that was Colvin's first kill. Her coming from being the defensive, defensive player of the week, it's surprising that this is her first kill tonight, but maybe she's just getting warmed up. Did you did you see it possibly go off of uh, the, the, the Cornhuskers' hands? Did you see that? I've got a little obstruction here, so it's hard to sometimes say, but I honestly saw it on Nebraska's side being out of bounds. Yeah, it's clearly hit out of bounds. The only question is, did it hit off the hands of a Cornhuster? And so that's what the referee is going to be looking over. He's going to be checking and saying, did that ball glance off the fingertips and almost redirect the ball out of bounds? Because then that's a Purdue point. It's really important to check the fine lines, especially in this play when you've got Purdue that's close to winning this match. Don't yeah. want to miss a thing here. Especially a very, very big point. The Boilermakers knocking on the door and flirting with stealing set one, or maybe shouldn't say stealing, but taking set one, coming in as the clear underdogs to the number two ranked team in the nation. I know you say it doesn't feel like stealing, but in a way, it's one of these things where Nebraska came in with such a high ranking. I mean, it's number one. It's Well, the title's not the only thing being stripped. Nebraska's gonna strip that point away from Purdue. It did not go off the fingertips of Merritt Beeson, and so it's 23-21. Nebraska, a furious comeback here late. Anderson over to Hudson. She can't get it over. That's a beautiful dig by Murray. And Nebraska inching closer, 23-22. Nebraska is starting to get a little more excited about what this, how this set will end. And Dave Shondell now seeing Nebraska creep back into the game. It's a close one here. Stay tuned for the end of this set. An extremely competitive first set is coming to a close. And I mean, Alex, it's going to be very interesting to see who comes away with it. The Boilermakers have been ahead for most of the set, but Nebraska has stayed right at their tails. It's 23-22. Nebraska lined up to serve. Rodriguez gets it over, but it's too strong. The Boilermakers have destiny in their hands as the crowd stands up at set point. They are right in reach of winning this, and I think everyone knows it, and they are gearing up. And so does head coach John Cook. He'll take his second time out of the set to talk things over, as there is no room for error on the Cornhusker sideline. Set point. Boilermakers looking to take set one against the undefeated Nebraska Cornhuskers. Hudson gets it away. It's over, set over on the right side. Be, uh, Beeson's block. Kept alive, blocked again, that one's by Woolock. And the strong hit is going to be called out. Point for new. Lindsey Krause hits it too strong, and the Boilermakers will, in fact, take set one. But it looks like not just yet. We'll have another look at it. John Cook believes it did hit the line. And 
you know, in this case, when you've got a set point, you want to make no mistakes. You want to make no error to make sure because it could cost your team that set. Exactly. There's no room for error. You can't leave a stone unturned. You might as well challenge something as questionable as that. It wasn't completely obvious, so might as well look it over. It seems like this set went so quickly at the start and all of a sudden it seems like back to back to back. It's yeah. either a, a challenge or a timeout by these coaches kind of slowing down uh, this first set. But hey, it got out to a very quick jump. And once again though, the call is gonna go Nebraska's way. That's three times. Unbelievable. That's three times the call has gone Nebraska's way, so. John Cook definitely seeing the game extremely well. Two challenges, two good calls. And Nebraska trying to rally back and win. Serves it away. Anderson over to Chacoy, and that is set one. Chloe Chacoy gets the kill, wins the set, and the Boilermakers are ahead. 1-0.